Here. Read this. God grants you an interview, 1600 North Hope Street, Los Angeles, California, room 2700. Tomorrow at 11 a.m. It's a gag. Imagine an actual interview with God. I do love the imaginary scenarios Christians dream up in an attempt to make their superstitions seem more believable. It only makes them look silly to atheists, but their movies aren't really targeted to us anyway. Just like the Bible, Christian movies are not meant to convince people that are skeptical of their claims, but rather provide ammunition for someone that already believes and is working backward to rationalize their conclusion. Oh God is another movie about a non-believer that is visited by God, because we haven't heard this story before. This time, God wants to convince the atheist to spread his message to the world. Oh God is the attempt of hippie boomers to redefine God while trying their hand at comedy. It goes about as poorly as you would imagine. It is filled with out-of-touch boomerisms and delusional platitudes. In this hippie rendition of Who Wants to Be a Believer, God leaves a note and requests that our non-believer, Jerry, attend a meeting with His Holiness. Jerry's wife, Bobby, is skeptical, although she is portrayed as a believer. In fact, everyone in the movie, many of which are believers, are all skeptical, and even mock Jerry's claim of meeting God. Part of the mocking and skepticism are attempts at comedy, but underneath there is a persecution complex narrative being fed to Christians. The movie wants you to believe that most of America would scoff at the idea of a person saying they talk to God. This has never been true. Mainstream media still treats claims of God with kid gloves, and this movie was made in 1977 a time in which religion was still part of the traditional power structure. The hippie influence can be seen trying to redefine religion and spirituality by challenging the corporate and ecclesiastical authorities. Although the movie completely fails to offer any rational argument for God or provide much in the way of funny moments, it did get me thinking about what it would take for God to prove his existence to me. For many years, I, like most atheists, have been unable to pinpoint what exactly a god could do to convince me that he truly exists. It is such an abstract question, making it hard to formulate a definitive answer that is logically consistent. I have mostly shared the sentiment of other atheists, defaulting to the answer that an all-powerful and all-knowing god would know what would convince me. So if god was real and wanted to convince me, then he could provide me with the evidence that would be sufficient. Thanks to this movie, I now have a clear idea of what a god would need to do to convince me of its existence, and I will discuss what it would take as we see what god offers up in this movie. Stay. What is it? You're right on time. I like that. Close the door. Who are you? You read the note. Who's that, Artie? God. Come on, Artie. No, it's me. God. God. Right, God. God Almighty. Big G. It's not a gag, I promise. Where are you going? Uh, I've got this load of plums coming in. Let the plums wait. How often do you talk with God? Practically never. How do I know you're God? I mean, all I hear is a voice on an intercom. Well, you're not allowed to see me. Who is surprised that the first platitude is a well-worn excuse for God not appearing to us? Why not? Because. That's no answer. Show me. If you are God. Yeah. If you're really God. Yeah, yeah. If I'm really God, what? You're leaving? Right the first time. Where are you leaving? Where do you think you are? What do you mean, where do I think I am? Right here's where I am. That's where. And where is here? 1600 North Hope Street, r room uh, 2700. Jerry. Huh? 
There's no room 2700 in this building. There's no 27th floor here. I thought this way we'd have a little privacy. Check it out. Go ahead, I'll wait. Jerry checks out the building and discovers that it only has 17 floors. After confirming this fact, he takes the elevator and proceeds to try several floors, only to arrive at the non-existent 27th each time. I have to admit that this would be a remarkable display of God's power, but it wouldn't be enough to convince me. There are many reasons that I could be tricked into thinking that this actually occurred. You're scared? Well, sure. Oh, but look, if this is a joke, it's gone too far. It's no joke. How come you've got such a, I mean, just a voice, like everybody's? Empathy. I'm talking to you in a way you can accept. I'm relating. I don't like to brag, but if I appeared to you just as God, how I really am, what I really am, your mind couldn't grasp it. We can't grasp God, and our minds can't handle it. Why wouldn't an all-powerful God be able to make us understand? This is really more of an excuse for God's absence than it is an explanation. Look, I think you made a mistake. I'm not religious. So? Well, I'm not one of your believers. And I sure as heck don't believe this. That's why I showed up. Too many non-believers. Too many non-believers. So God shows up in voice only to talk to one man. Yes, that confirms it for the rest of us. If only we had a man to tell us he spoke to God today. That would change everything. But I, but I read in an article that religion is on the upswing. Religion is easy. I'm talking about faith. You're going to help me change that. Me? I, I don't belong to any church. Neither do I. So begins the move from traditional religion to a personal faith slash relationship bullshit. Go back to work. I don't want you to get in trouble. Thank you. We'll talk on the way. How? Trust me, like it says on the money. <laughs> Jerry. You want me to talk louder? Oh, God. I thought you didn't believe in me. Uh, that's just an expression. I'm more than that. I want you to spread the word. Me? Spread what word? That I am. I exist. That we've spoken. What a profound message from the supposed greatest intelligence. Why would a god need people to tell each other that he exists? Shouldn't we expect something more insightful than a man repeating claims of a god existing? Billions already think god exists. So how is one more saying they talk to god significant? Isn't this just playing to those that already believe? If God is trying to reach non-believers, shouldn't he appeal to them? You, you want me to tell people that, that I've spoken with God? Yes. They'll put me away. If only they would. I'm tired of all the talk that I may be dead or that I never was at all. Or that God was just particles of cosmos. Gas. I'm not gas. I found that very insulting. Do you actually expect people to, to believe? That's, that's your job. Well, at least the movie is consistent with the bullshit peddled by the Bible. Apparently God isn't accountable in making people believe he exists. He really wants people to believe he exists, but he wants humans to convince other humans. The rationalization of theists is truly childlike. But, but I, I'm just a man. I, 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 I'm no Moses. What was Moses? You think Moses was born on page one? Moses was just a messenger. My messenger. God needs messengers. He sure sounds lazy and apathetic. Job. Yeah, I, I, I don't believe. I know, I know. But even non-believers want what they've got down here to work. Yes, we do want the world to be a better place. And that is why we try to change things with the government. The reason we struggle to enact the policies needed to make lives better is precisely because of people that think of God as the answer and therefore do nothing but obstruct human progress. Well, have you read the papers lately? It, it ain't working. That's why I came, to tell everybody I set the world up so it can work. Only it's up to you. You can't look to me to do it for you. I created this mess, but it is up to you to fix it. 
Now worship me for being so powerful and wise. Uh, no, no. Uh, you can do it. That's only one message. Moses had to handle ten. But, but you gave him tablets. He had a bad memory. Well, I need something. I... What kind of something? I don't know. Maybe something convincing? You could start by actually convincing me. A voice in a room and in the car isn't exactly proof of a god. Why does it seem like God hasn't thought about any of these questions himself? I don't know. Uh, anything. A, a, a tape recording. My voice wouldn't come out on tape. It's very, very complicated. It's like, uh, you know how Dracula can't see himself in a mirror? It's along those lines. Uh, but, but, I mean, if people could just hear your voice, I... This isn't even how I sound. I'm talking like this only so that you'll understand me. Understand? I don't understand anything. Well, that's a beginning. Over and out. If only God would make an 8-track with his voice, so people could play it in their ugly-ass AMC pacer, then people would believe. Harry, do you remember when Artie Coogan set up that hidden microphone and he broadcast those filthy limericks through the television set? It was not Artie. I know all of Artie's voices. And Artie is not capable of adding 10 stories to a building that doesn't have them, and he cannot talk back and forth through a car radio that's been busted for two months. Now, whoever the hell this guy is, he's very smart, and I'm going to listen to him for a while. And you think it's God? Well, he thinks he's God, and I'm in no position to argue with him. There you have it, folks. He thinks he's God. And I can't explain the radio or building. The acting in this movie, especially by John Denver as Jerry, is just fucking atrocious. I picked a look you could understand. For someone else, I would look different. I could do any face, voice, whatever. I could, I could even be a woman. Well, God finally does more than a voice. And for all the transphobe bigots out there, God can be a woman. Just so you know. Why me? Why not you? You mean there's no special? Life is a crapshoot. Like the millionth customer who crosses a bridge, gets to shake hands with the governor. The divine wisdom is overwhelming. God's ways are just too deep for us to understand. Life is a crapshoot. What the fuck kind of shit is that? People are always uh, praying to you. Do you listen? I can't help hearing. I don't always listen. I can't help hearing, but I don't always listen? Bullshit platitudes for the sheep. This is the kind of shit you use to excuse the depravity in the world while maintaining that an all-loving God is watching over us. If God is watching and can hear everything, and also has the power to create the universe, but does nothing to help little children being abused in his churches, he sucks. And he hasn't done anything to deserve our admiration and worship. D then you don't care? Of course I care. I care plenty. But what can I do? What, what can you do? You're God. Only for the big picture. I don't get into details. Then whatever happens to us... Happens. Mysterious ways. God only gets involved in the big picture, but leaves us to our own devices for all other things. Except when he is revealing himself to special people like Jerry. You don't control our lives? I gave you a world and everything in it. It's all up to you. We need help. That's why I gave you each other. Here. Yeah. We are on our fucking own, people. Looks like God is washing his hands of the problems he's created. Well, anyway, why don't you? I would solve all our problems. We'll work a few miracles. I don't do miracles. They're too flashy, and they upset the natural balance. Sorry, I would rather watch people suffer than to help, because... I don't want to upset the natural balance I created. That isn't ironic or anything. No miracles, huh? I knew it. Oh, maybe now and then just to keep my hand in. The last miracle I did was the 1969 Mets. Before that, I think you have to go back to the Red Sea. That was, that was a beauty. Guess that eliminates the resurrection of Jesus. No offense, but I, I don't believe the Red Sea, and I don't believe... Six days to create the world. Me either. You're right. I am? Tell you the honest truth, I thought about it for five days and did the whole job in one. I'm really best under pressure. 
one day to create the world? And the sun. I hate to work in the dark. Anyway, you have to remember that one of my days is not exactly one of yours. How long are they? When I got up this morning, Sigmund Freud was still in medical school. This is called bullshitting for the Bible. Let's redefine what a day is so our superstitious story sounds more believable. I never understood apologists that want to pretend like a day for God in the Bible isn't the same as a day on earth, as if this makes a story of creating the universe by speaking it into existence more believable. But if you're so involved with us, yeah, I... how can you permit all the suffering that goes on in the world? Ah, uh, how can I permit the suffering? Yeah. I don't permit the suffering, you do. Free will. All the choices are yours. Choices? What choices? You can love each other, cherish and nurture each other, you can kill each other. Yep, free will. Without the ability to murder each other, I just couldn't accept your love. Sorry humans, but your suffering is necessary to test your devotion to me. Now worship me. Never mind that you are in this world by my design for my entertainment. But I really value your free will. Get the fuck out of here. I look down, I don't believe the filth. Using rivers for toilets. Poisoning my fishes. You want a miracle? You make a fish from scratch. You can't. You think only God can make a tree? Try coming up with a mackerel. And when the last one is gone, that'll be that. 86 on the fishes. Goodbye sky, so long world. Over and out. I, I thought you said we were going to make it. I said you've got to make it work. Y you, you don't care. I do care. Well, then do something about it. I did. I got you to carry the ball. What a pathetic and lazy God. He is so upset by the condition of the world that he can't lift a finger to do anything outside of making an appearance to one man. Then he expects this man to deliver a vague message of platitudes about God existing and we need to make things work. It's pretty obvious that a bunch of stoned hippies sitting around talking about the love of Jesus wrote this movie. I got no ball. Well, how can I carry it? I gave you a mouth, didn't I? Tell people how I feel, what I said. How do I do that? How did you get to be an assistant manager? Did you ever hear of newspapers, reporters? You got a scoop here, an exclusive. A hold the presses. Fine. Fine. And, and, and how do I convince anybody that I've actually seen you? Uh, th th that you exist? Simple. Show them this. Boom. The evidence is overwhelming now. Thanks, God. While the movie is tongue-in-cheek, ironically, this is on par with the pathetic evidence presented by Christians on a daily basis. Just look at the trees. God? Chemicals. All chemicals. Turning kids into garbage cans. This is one of the few things the movie gets right. If only they could see how much worse our food has gotten. Jerry, I didn't see one word in the newspapers. Well, of course not. Why, that guy at the Times kept looking at me like I, I was some kind of a lunatic, and, and, and I felt like one. Did you show him my card? Sure I did, and, and he said you can get one of those in, in, in any novelty store. Here. You know, I really felt like an idiot. Now, please don't do that to me again. You said what I said? Absolutely. And they didn't find God's word fit the print? Some tough cookies, boy. Tough cookies? Or people with an iota of critical thought. Sadly, many believers feel equally bad testimony should be convincing. I recently had a person tell me that they heard a voice while driving, and it told them to stop. Then a truck came around the corner on their side of the road, right where they would have been. If not for the voice of God, they would have been in a huge collision. Must have been God. Ain't no other explanation. I can't understand it. Why wouldn't a religious editor believe you? Well, face it, uh, you goofed again, just like the avocado pit. You picked the wrong message, boy. Or you provided shit for evidence. Three letters printed on a card and a dumbass to deliver the message. Gee, wonder why we don't believe the room temperature IQ folks filling the pews and playing with snakes. 
You don't believe I'm here, do you? <laughs> no, I don't. Then, uh, then how do you explain this conversation we're having? I'm having. I'm dreaming you. And I ought to be real glad when I wake up, too. What color are my eyes? Huh? My eyes. Blue. My shirt? Red plaid. Well, well, what has that got to do with anything? Do you dream in color? No. Bingo again. Most people actually do dream in color. This is just more debunked old wives' tale shit. Okay. All right. I see you know a lot of things, and, and, and you've been making a lot of things happen, but, but none of it seems... Godlike? Yeah, godlike. And what to you would be godlike? Uh... Change the weather. Ah, special effects, huh? Changing the weather is great and all, but I'd ask for something a bit more grand. I'm asking for something that doesn't happen regularly. How about you send a giant comet through our solar system that wipes out Pluto? You can tell me in advance, and I can deliver this prediction to the world. We can confirm that NASA and other space agencies have no knowledge of a comet that large anywhere near our solar system. Tell me the exact time it will take place, and we will count this as a miracle that could not be predicted or explained. Then people would have reason to believe that something outside of the human race existed. While it could have still been an advanced race of beings from somewhere else in the universe, I will grant the benefit of doubt to anyone that can make such an unpredictable revelation. What would you like? A little, a little earthquake? Uh, a small hurricane? Well, no, no, I, I wouldn't want anybody hurt. I was just thinking maybe, uh, what about a little rain? A little rain? Yeah, a, a small shower. One small shower, you got it. Hey! Hey, it's raining! You made it rain! This man is ready to settle for a little rain. He has God riding shotgun in his pimped out AMC pacer with wood panels, and the best he can come up with is rain. How disappointing. You didn't even bat an eye! You, you didn't have to lift a finger! Rain's not that hard. It's unbelievable! Would you like it to rain a little harder? No, no, this is fine. How about bigger drops? No, this is fine, fine. Would you care for a little snow? I don't believe it. Our hippie atheist is sold. I saw him. He spoke to me. All right. Let's say for a minute that you saw God. Look, don't humor me. That'll really make me crazy. Okay, okay. You saw him. But why is he talking to you? Well, why not me? Well, why not the Pope or Billy Graham or somebody way up there? Because he doesn't care about religion. Oh, God doesn't care about religion, huh? Well, that's what he said. Well, he sure picked a funny business to go into then, didn't he? She has a hell of a point. What an asinine statement to say that God doesn't care about religion. This is the hippie influence pushing religion to become a spiritual relationship. I guess they figure if they distance themselves enough from the history and dogma of religion that they can reinvent God as a new character free from the death and hate spread in his name. Jerry, for some reason that I can't even begin to fathom, you really believe all this stuff, don't you? Can't you? Well, I believe that you believe. Which, in some sense, is the same as believing, I guess. What? No. Believing that someone else believes the story doesn't equal you believing their story. You can tell this movie was written by believers when they throw out completely irrational dialogue without batting an eye. Schizophrenics believe their delusions. We understand that they truly believe in something that isn't real, so why would we use a person's belief as the standard for determining truth? We seriously need to teach critical thinking in schools. Mr. Landers? Yes. Channel 11, 10 o'clock news. Uh, you're quoted as saying that you, you've talked with God, sir? Yes. Face to face? That's right. He's a fruitcake. And you say God wants to affirm he's alive and he's very disappointed with the way we're handling our world? Uh, th that, that's right. 
how are you going to get people to believe you? Well, it, 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 it wasn't my idea. You know, uh, he, he picked me. Said every cult leader ever. Yes, and that he would like us to, uh, to cherish and, and nurture each other as opposed to killing one another. He said that. Yeah, that, 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 that he's, our, he's our shepherd and, and we, we shall not want. Unless you need something from him, because he can't really help you out, you know, because of free will and stuff. Oh. Sit, sit down, sit down, sit down. When you said that everything was going to work out, I, I thought you could tell the future. Absolutely, I could tell the future. The minute it becomes the past. I said everything could work out, if that's everybody's choice. Wow. Everything could work out if people just choose to work together. How fucking profound. If that is the case, what do we need God for? Looks like God is really just endorsing humanism to me. People have to decide on their own what's to be done with the world. I can't make a personal decision for everybody. Why the face? So far, so good. We hit the papers, a little TV, we're in business. You know, I'm, I'm liable to lose my job. Lose a job, save a world. Not a bad deal. Be a nut job. It'll all work out in the end. If it doesn't, you were just being persecuted anyway. I swear movies like this just reinforce stupid behavior of religious zealots. Now what happens? Now we see who can still believe. Who wants to. Who needs to. Kind of a Freudian slip here. It is all about appealing to those that are inclined to believe already. It's all about wanting to believe or needing to believe. It's almost like they're admitting that belief in God is a psychological crutch. A few million people saw you last night, right? A few million? Some of them will believe you. Some? Guess it's not important how effective the method of spreading God's word is. Of course, it doesn't matter if God is going to remain low effort anyway. It's not like he can be bothered to act. Some are going to want to punch him in the head. Some will want to fire me. Some may decide I'm too crazy to live with. We can't worry about those. The ball is rolling. Yeah, right over me. Don't be a malcontent. I'll watch over you. It's okay if the world thinks you're crazy and you lose everything in your life. What terrible advice. Imagine watching bullshit like this if you're a schizophrenic. You are now being encouraged to chase your delusions and turn your back on the world. And we wonder why America is in the middle of a mental health crisis. Yeah. Jerry? Yes, Scott? You have the strength that comes from knowing. Another beautiful platitude to reinforce the craziness. Jerry has the strength that comes from knowing. Now get over there and lead your cult. There's always a bit of irony that comes from Christians portraying a cult. This is from the university. I I've been invited to appear before a theology group. They want to verify the miracle. Terrific. It is. Th this will give me credibility and God will get his word across. It'll help me keep my job. Because Christians are so persecuted. If they openly say that they talk to God, they'll be fired from their jobs. More like promoted. Anyway, Jerry thinks that he's going to gain credibility by talking to a group of theologians. Imagine thinking that your credibility depends on the opinions of a group of people that have dedicated their lives to studying ancient superstitions about invisible and undetectable gods. Mr. Landers, it is the consensus of this group that you are a person of little or no theological knowledge. You have demonstrated over the years an astonishing lack of interest in spiritual matters. You know, it strikes me, as one who has actually heard his voice, that you have virtually no prerequisites to make direct contact with the Almighty whatsoever. So contacting God takes prerequisites? This is the big attack on church authority, and it is about all the fake-ass hippie boomers could do to take on the corrupt system. They pretended to oppose the corporations, but sold us out. They objected to authority figures just to become one themselves. The worst generation ever. I know his word through the scriptures. It would be blasphemy to suggest that we could describe the creator in human terms. Why? I mean, if he created us, why wouldn't he appear to us as one of us?
Damn boomers think that a new Jesus is bound to pop up at the next Dead concert. These fools really thought they were onto something. If only they could separate God from religion and get everyone to smoke weed, join hands, and sing. We could just fix the world, one joint at a time. Mr. Landers, we really find insufficient documentation to support your claim. Imagine church leaders citing insufficient documentation to verify someone spoke with God. Miracles for Mother Teresa include a woman praying next to a picture of her. Light emanated from her image, bringing about a complete healing. Mother Teresa provided a couple almost miracles as well. A girl touched a medallion, and later her broken ribs healed. Another girl saw her in a dream. Now that's some top-level documentation. I can't imagine why NASA doesn't pray to her for help with their missions. We have decided, however, out of a sense of fairness and ecclesiastical curiosity, to allow you to present us with certain evidence. What evidence? We have assembled a set of questions for you to ask God. There are 50 questions. 50? You want me to get God to take a quiz? This is the best idea these fools have come up with yet. Damn right I want God to answer some questions. Wouldn't be the same dumbass questions these clowns will ask. First and foremost, why are you so hidden? It's not like knowing you exist is unfair or interferes with our ability to worship you. Apparently you made yourself known before according to believers. None of them were excluded from the cool kids group because you revealed yourself to them. Besides, in the Bible, many people are supposed to see God, but choose to turn away. So why can we not see God? Hell, you could at least make your existence a logical conclusion. Give me something to work with. I forgot the ketchup. Oh, c come in! This motherfucker is putting ketchup on steak. I just need to include this so you understand... What a truly depraved individual we are dealing with. A complete fucking psycho. <laughs> Did man fall from grace in the Garden of Eden? I'll tell you something never came out. I made Adam 17. Eve was 15, 16 tops. I figured then 16, 17 was middle age, you know. Who knew people would live so long? Trees, I figured had the best chance. Now I realize that they were kids, babies. Young people can't fall for my grace. They're my best things. Put that down. Definitely a hippie revision of the story of the Garden of Eden. God has lost all of his anger and judgment from the Old Testament and adopted this new spiritual advisor, Hippie Jesus vibe. These folks are definitely trying to wash themselves of the archaic bigotry permeating the Bible. And what does he mean, who knew people would live so long? I thought people lived forever before the fall of man. Okay. Which of the world's religions is the closest to the divine truth? The divine truth is not in a building or a book or a story. Put down that the heart is the temple wherein all truth resides. Complete horseshit spiritual metaphor. Saying this has no value. It is really begging the believer to make emotionally based decisions and trust things like intuition instead of reason. This is how you dismantle the principles of critical thought and form cult members. What was that last question? Uh, will, 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 oh, there yeah. be... will there be a judgment day for man? Well, if they mean a doomsday, an end of the world thing, I'm certainly not going to get into that. But if you want my personal opinion, I wouldn't look forward to it. Be a lot of yelling and screaming, and I don't need that any more than you do. Got that? Hippie Christian would rather not talk about an apocalypse or judgment. They'd rather focus on the prize of eternal bliss. Just put on the blinders. Pretend like your religion doesn't preach all kinds of sick violence followed by an oxymoronic God that loves you so much he would burn you forever. How seriously stupid must you be to not connect the dots that this is all just ancient horseshit? Got it. Uh, what is uh, the meaning of man's existence? Uh, life, life is like a glass of tea. No, no, I better not go for laughs. 
You know, you know, Voltaire may have had me pegged right. He said I was a comedian playing to an audience who was afraid to laugh. Yet again, they distanced themselves from the hateful God of the Bible. Voltaire is reflecting on the contradictory nature of a God that is equal parts love and cruel bigot. People have feared the idea of gods through the ages, more than they have revered and loved them. Love between gods and humans isn't the main storyline in religions. It's control and pseudo-explanatory. Christians have struggled to coalesce their New Testament love child Jesus with the sadist boomer asshole of the Old Testament. Many Christians like these folks are just wanting to cut ties altogether. Christians used to either read the Bible, go to church, or both. Now a huge percentage of them don't do either. They just run with whatever cultural version they have been handed. Referring to a charlatan apologist like Frank Turek suffices for actually reading the Bible. But seriously, put down that man and women persons. Their existence means exactly and precisely. Not more, not one tiny bit less. Just what they think it means and what I think doesn't count at all. That's very profound. Sometimes I get lucky. If you weren't really careful, you might think they were borrowing from humanists. Last question. Thank God. You're welcome. Why have you chosen to appear at this time? You've already said. Well, well maybe they want to hear it in your own words. Oh. I want to say to everyone that everything around them that they can see and smell and feel and hear, they should delight in all this. That what is here are some of my very best ideas. And I want everyone to try very hard to make sure it doesn't all go down the drain. Smoke some weed, have sex, and protect the environment. Got it. I just can't believe that God would set me up to get me into all of this trouble. I, I, I have to believe that he had a reason, and, and I have to believe that he'll bail me out. Another jab at critical thinking. Let's teach people that they will be saved by some invisible and undetectable God. Don't worry about your situation. Your superhero will swoop in and save the day. The idea that things all happen for a reason is teaching that intuition-based thinking is superior to analytical. If you want to know why most Americans can't think critically, you have your answer. Call your witnesses, please, Mr. Landers. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, I would like to call one witness and, and one witness only. I'm waiting, Mr. Landers. Yes. Your Honor, I would like to call to the stand the Lord God. I object. Defendant's trying to make a mockery of this proceeding. Your Honor, I was, I was trying to make a point. What point? Your Honor, when, when I just asked God to take the stand, in that fleeting moment after I called him, w wasn't there a trace of expectation in your mind? D just a trace, Your Honor? I mean, wasn't there a hesitation in this room? Didn't you feel it? Didn't we all feel it? It, it was the possibility that, that God does exist. And, and if he exists, he, he could materialize and sit right in that chair. And. In, in, in that moment, Your Honor, when no one in this room knew, knew what was going to happen next, in that flash of an instant lies the benefit of the doubt that, that, that you must give me to know that my, my story is true and that I spoke exactly as God asked me. This might be the dumbest shit I have ever heard. A room full of self-professed believers having anticipation over the idea that their imagined, all-powerful God could appear before them and since many people wondered if it might happen, then you must give him the benefit of doubt that his story is true. What kind of bullshit is that? People had a feeling, therefore you talked to God. Hell, I would have a feeling too. It wouldn't be the expectation that a God would appear though. It would be the anticipation and excitement associated with watching grown folks make complete fools of themselves in the longest running LARP in human history. Excuse me, Your Honor. It's him. Bobby, it's him. 
this, uh, this is most irregular. Y y your Honor, he's... I'll take it from here. May I ask who you are, sir? You better swear me in. You'll never believe it. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help me, me. So help you, you? If it pleases the court, and even if it doesn't please the court, I'm God, Your Honor. Looks like God is coming through for old Jerry. If only he'd do this for the rest of us, right? He saw me. Just like he said. Each word true. The man tried to tell a lie, his tongue would snap off which I wouldn't say I could say about everybody. Why is it so hard for you to believe it? Is my physical existence any more improbable than your own? Terrible analogy. Our existence isn't in question. Descartes settled this many years ago with I think, therefore I am. Our mind is self-aware, at least most of us. Besides, we experience shared physical sensations we use to socially confirm our existence. There isn't a doubt that we exist. Sure, it could all be a simulation, but even if it was, we exist by all measures within its confines. And since our reality is contained within this simulation, then we exist as far as we can tell. Plus, there is no way to determine the probability of an unfalsifiable claim of an invisible and undetectable God. So no, God's physical existence isn't as probable as our own. What about all that hoo-ha with the devil a while ago from that movie? Nobody had any trouble believing that the devil took over and existed in the little girl. All she had to do was wet the rug, throw up some pea soup, and everybody believed. God is quite upset that the exorcist did so well at the theater. The devil you could believe, but not God, huh? No, that really doesn't change anything for me, actually. Also, I'm not about to go around to every person in the world and say, look, it's me, I want to talk to you. So I picked one man. One very good man. God is either lazy or stupid. Surely he has watched people killed in the name of God, while others were just wholly unconvinced. This method of telling a guy and using him as a messenger has a high failure rate in history. God isn't a very wise student. I told him God lives. I live. He had trouble believing, too, in the beginning. I understood. Because there isn't good reason to believe God exists. I'm not sure how this whole miracle business started. The idea that anything connected with me has to be a miracle. Personally, I'm sorry that it did. Makes the distance between us even greater. Forget the all-powerful magic god of miracles, except the warm and fuzzy feeling god of hippie boomers. Just get in touch with your energy and connect with nature. Let the pulse of the universe travel through your body and take over your heart and mind. Fuck off with that hippie bullshit. But if a miracle helps you believe that I am who I say I am, I'll give you one. A good one. It's about fucking time. This shit better be good. Let me see. What's my most impressive miracle? Aha. Pick a card. Uh, what? Pick a card. Any card. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what you think you're doing. A cute little miracle. Go ahead, pick one. Well, there are no cards there. Look again. Oh, oh come on now. Uh, there's nothing miraculous about good sleight of hand. Have you ever seen this one? God came all this way to make cards appear and disappear? Why is it never anything cool? God could have opened a portal to heaven and let everyone see their family members and communicate with them. But hell no. We get a dollar store David Copperfield. Well, yes, yes, I've, I've seen them make cards appear and disappear. As a matter of fact, I once saw a magician make an elephant disappear. Good. Now I'll show you one that you haven't seen. 
Yes, we've all seen illusionists make things disappear. You gotta get these shoes fixed. <laughs> Watch this, Your Honor. Impressive, but we see people do this. Why do these Christians always use examples that include things we have already seen faked? Why would a God not do something that only he is capable of? I know how hard it is at these times to have faith. But maybe if you could have the faith to start with, maybe the times would change. You could change them. Think about it. Try. Well, that settles it. God gives shitty advice. Whatever problems you have, God has some really shitty advice for you. Just try, try not to be an asshole. Try to make things work. Try to have faith. It might just all luckily work out for you. And try not to hurt each other. There's been enough of that. And it really gets in the way. I'm a god of very few words, and Jerry's already given you mine. However hopeless, helpless, mixed up, and scary it all gets, it can work. If you find it hard to believe in me, maybe it would help you to know that I believe in you. Your Honor, I rest my case. I feel like we got the Homer Simpson of gods. This guy just isn't going to inconvenience himself or offer much in the way of wisdom. That's all there is. Not one word of what I assume we all assume we heard. Someone must have erased it. Nobody erases tapes anymore. Well, then the machine. Uh... No, not a thing wrong with it. He said he couldn't be recorded. God. When he first spoke to me, he said it wasn't his real voice I heard. He said he was just using one that I could understand. And he did it again today. And there's nothing wrong with your stenotype machine? It took down every word, Your Honor, except now some of them are not on the paper. Don't you see? He, he, he wants us all to decide for ourselves whether or not we saw him and, and heard him. It's uh -oh, what he always said. That everything is up to us. See? We still have free will because God made all the evidence disappear. If he appeared to us and we had evidence... That would negate our ability to believe based on faith. And our God not only needs you to believe, but he needs you to do it without evidence. No, no. There is no proof whatsoever that God was in that courtroom today. No, none whatsoever. We saw him. We, we heard him. We did. This is really another attempt to drill intuitive decision making into your head. Don't worry about the lack of evidence. You gotta trust your experience. Now, if, as you also claim, it is uh, God's uh, opinion uh, that we uh, should all make our own decisions and abide by them accordingly, then I must also rule that on the basis of the evidence, or, uh, or rather the, um, uh, the lack of it, that as much as we all may think that what we saw here today was real, uh, God did not, in fact, appear here before us. You uh, may, of course, appeal to a higher court. We heard from the highest court. They really thought they did something special there. We failed, didn't we? What are you talking? We did terrific. I gave a message of encouragement. You passed it along. Now we'll see. You did good. We both did good. What covered? Low effort. Well, we told a few people. I think that pretty well covers it. We can wash our hands of the whole deal. Whoever burns, burns. We did what we could. You think anybody got the message? You think we have enough apples in the world? Apples? We got all the apples we need. You're Johnny Appleseed. You drop a few seeds and you move on. If the seeds are good, they'll take root. 
I gave you great scenes, the best. Sadly, if God actually showed up in a court and disappeared, it would be the best seeds he ever planted. Unfortunately, we have nothing of the sort. All we ever get is a guy like Jerry saying he heard some shit. I lost my job, you know. There are other cities, other supermarkets. Everybody thinks I'm a nut. Galileo, Pasteur, Einstein, Columbus. You're in good company. Hold on. The religious quacks want to conflate their spiritual delusions with people that were doubted for their ideas about the world. Notice the difference is all of the discoveries relied on demonstrable and testable evidence. Empirical evidence is the standard for discovery. Well, better be going. Uh, aren't you coming back? No. Ever? Whenever comes, we'll see. Uh, sometimes, uh, now and then, couldn't we just talk? I'll tell you what, you talk, I'll listen. How fitting that we find that God isn't ready to commit too much to our new relationship. We end knowing that a relationship with God is one way. No one is going to help you. Everything is up to you. But I need you to believe in me based on faith. They get so close to figuring it all out sometimes. They tow up to the line and reduce their God to the darkest recesses of the unknown, but back out at the last second afraid of what life and death means without the warm, fuzzy stories of blissful reuniting with your family. Religious belief is a strictly emotional proposition. There is no reason involved. People might be tricked by charlatans like Frank Turek into believing their position is based on more than emotions, but it's all just fallacious drivel for those that want to believe. 